Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Daton C25 NK2, a pusher style 2.5 inch micro quadcopter that features a molded plastic frame and designed for carrying a lightweight action camera in order to enable you to safely capture HD footage both indoors and outdoors. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, give my feedback after testing it out and show you some flight footage. First of all, in terms of packaging, the C25 MK2 comes inside a nice Dayton branded carrying case which is going to enable you to store the quadcopter and its accessories. Inside the case, along with the quadcopter of course, you are getting a pretty long USB to USB Type-C cable, two 14 cm long high quality Dayton branded battery velcro straps, a spare closed molded plastic frame, the assembly diagram of the frame, the wiring diagram of the all-in-one flight controller, some spare screws and nuts, some zip ties, harnesses for connecting a ready receiver and an analog camera to the flight controller, plastic tubes for protecting the antennas of the ready receiver, a single set of Jenfen Flash 63mm propellers which are especially designed for ducted frames, a spare battery mat, a coupon code for your next purchase on Dayton's website, carbon fiber parts which are going to fully enclose the frame and better protect the propellers, a spare carbon fiber part which is going to enable you to either mount an action camera on the front of the frame or another one on its backside, a spare 3D printed action camera mount and an IPX to an SMA antenna connector along with a 3D printed TPU part which is going to enable you to mount the connector on the back of the frame. In terms of features and specs, the C25 MK2 is available in a couple of versions. The digital version is bundled with the Cadex Vista Polar digital transmission system, the analog version with the Cadex Baby Rattle 2 nano-sized FMB camera and either the TBS Unified Pro 32 or the Dayton Mamba TX500 video transmitters and the power kit version which is the one that I initially got will require you to install your own VTX and FB camera. All the versions are available with either an FR Sky D16 compatible or a TBS Crossfire Nano receiver or you can get them without a radio receiver and install your own one and for an extra cost you can get them bundled with the Cadex Peanut HD camera. In addition, all the versions feature the Dayton Mamba Toka 1404-4000 kV motors that can handle up to 4S batteries and on the center of the frame you can find an F7 all-in-one flight controller that features an integrated 35A BLLES 4-in-1 ESC. As for this interesting frame, most of it is made out of molded plastic parts, its wheelbase is 110mm and it features a squash DX pattern. As for its weight, including a Cadex Vista unit and an early prototype version of the Foxeer Apollo HD camera, the C25 MK2 weighs about 156 grams. Including a GNB 600 mAh Forest LSV battery, it weighs just under 212 grams, and the total weight, including the battery and the Cadex Pinat HD camera, is 247.6 grams. In addition, the weight of the carbon fiber propeller protectors is 5.6 grams, so in case you are going to use them along with a lightweight action camera, you will probably need to use a smaller battery in case you need to stay below 250 grams. In order to set up the quadcopter, first of all, in case you have the power kit version, you will need to install your own VTX and camera. I've installed the Cadex Vista digital transmission unit and an early prototype version of the Foxeer Apollo HD camera, which by the way, I'm going to review its final version soon. Pay attention that on the digital version, it's going to be hard to mount an action camera on the back of the frame, whereas on the analog version, it's going to be much easier. So in case you'd like to, you can install two action cameras and capture HD footage from both front and back sides of the quadcopter. As for Betaflight configuration, here you can see pretty much the default settings, so most of the settings are pre-configured for you, and as always, the dump settings are included down below, so in case you need to, you can use them in order to restore the drone to its default factory settings. 
The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Daton C25 MK2 quadcopter. And overall, after testing it out, I can tell you that in my opinion, it's a good option as a platform for capturing HD footage, both indoors and outdoors, using a lightweight action camera, such as the Kadex Pinat, as it is relatively quiet, flies well, and will provide you with about five minutes of flight time with an onboard lightweight action camera using a 600 mAh Forrest LHV battery, which is not bad at all. In addition, in terms of durability, as far as I can tell, the molded plastic frame, especially the one with the hollow parts, is going to be able to withstand some crashes, and it's a nice add-on that you're also getting a spare one, and the only thing that I think that you need to pay attention to is that in case you're not going to use a nano-sized camera, the lens is not going to be properly protected. So what I recommend to do is to use a nano-sized FPB camera, such as the Nebula Pro Nano, which was recently released. Finally, as for the carbon fiber propellers protectors, unfortunately, due to time constraints, I haven't got a chance to test them out, but as far as I can tell, they are going to be a good option in case you are going to fly the quadcopter indoors, and especially if you are going to fly it next to people, because in that case, it is better to have more protection than not having any protection at all, but since they are very fragile and going to break easily in case of a crash, I wouldn't recommend using them when flying the quadcopter outdoors. Anyway, that's going to be it for this quick video. Now I'm going to wrap it up with some flight footage. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye. Thank mm -hmm. you.